Yes, let's talk about hockey. The show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. After adding seven new teams during the 90s, the NHL looked to close out their decade-long expansion efforts with two final clubs to start out the new millennium. The second of these two new franchises was the NHL's second attempt at a presence in the North Star State, the Minnesota Wild. After the NHL's great expansion in 1967, Minnesota had been a proud member of the league in the form of the North Stars for 26 years before the club ultimately packed up and moved to Dallas in the summer of 1993 with management citing poor attendance and a failure to reach a deal for a new arena as their reasons for the move. It wasn't long, though, before St. Paul Mayor Norm Coleman began to campaign for either a new expansion team in Minnesota or to entice an existing franchise to relocate there. In fact, the relocation bid almost happened when a Minnesota-based group purchased the Winnipeg Jets in the fall of 1995. However, when negotiations for an arena in Minnesota fell through, the Jets were relocated to Phoenix instead. Luckily, less than two years later, the NHL announced it intended to expand from 26 to 30 teams and named Minnesota as one of the new expansion franchises set to start in the 2000-2001 season. Looking to pay tribute to the state's wildlife and outdoors reputation, a few possible names for the club were tossed around, including the Blue Ox, the Northern Lights, and the Voyagers. But in January of 1998, the new team was officially branded as the Minnesota Wild. To fill the role of GM, Doug Risebro was brought in from the Calgary Flames, and for their first head coach, Minnesota named former Stanley Cup winner Jacques Lemaire to the position. During the expansion draft in the summer of 2000, the Wild would select some decent veteran talent, such as Mike Vernon, Joe Juno, and Scott Pellerin. However, Vernon and Juno were quickly dealt to other teams in exchange for younger players and draft picks. The Wild's first game came on October 6, 2000 against the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. While Marion Gabarik, the club's first pick in the entry draft, would score the first goal for the franchise, it would be the only goal for Minnesota in this game as they lost 3-1. It would be another five games before the Wild registered their first win on October 18th against the Lightning. Wins would not come easily for Minnesota during this first year, as they only managed to win four of their first 20 games and three of their last 20 games, landing them at the bottom of their division and second from last in their conference. In their second year, the Wild would improve slightly, earning five more points in the standings than they did the previous year, while Gaverick became the club's first 30-goal scorer and winger Andrew Burnett set a new club mark with 69 points. Unfortunately, Minnesota would still finish last in their division once again. Things turned around in the 2002-2003 season as the Wild jumped off to an 8-1-2 start. With Gabryk producing another 30-goal year, four other players on the team tallying 40 or more points, and goaltenders Dwayne Rolison and Manny Fernandez ranking second and fourth in the league respectively for save percentage, Minnesota finished ranked sixth in the Western Conference for their club's first berth in the playoffs. In the opening round, the Wild were matched against the third-ranked Avalanche. A three-goal surge in the second period gave Minnesota the win in Game 1, but Colorado struck back by outscoring the Wild 9-3 to win the next three games. With their season on the line, Minnesota was able to hold off a third-period charge by Colorado to extend the series with a 3-2 win in Game 5. Then the Wild continued to defy the odds with two overtime victories in a row on the strength of goals by Richard Park in Game 6 and then Andrew Burnett in Game 7 to complete their first playoff series win. In Round 2, Minnesota was again the underdog against the Canucks, and even though the first four games were decided by only one goal, the Wild once again found themselves in a 3-1 series deficit. However, Minnesota would pull off another comeback, outscoring Vancouver 16-5 with goals from 10 different players over the next three games to advance to the Western Conference Finals. Unfortunately, Anaheim's goaltender J.S. Jaguer stonewalled the Wilds' offense during the first three games of the next series, stumping all of Minnesota's 98 shots. Though Brunette finally got the Wild on the board early in Game 4, he would be the only goal scorer on the team as Anaheim completed the sweep with a 2-1 win. 
Though their playoff run ended here, Jacques Lemaire brought home the club's first piece of hardware after receiving the Jack Adams Award for Coach of the Year. After this surprising playoff run, things took a step backwards for Minnesota in the 2003-2004 season. The club struggled due to contract holdouts from a couple of their stars, Marion Gabrick and Pascal Dupuy, going 9-13-4 in their first 26 games. And even after they finally signed these two holdouts, the Wild were never able to get back on track, finishing the year eight points out of playoff contention. When play resumed after the 2004-2005 lockout year, Minnesota once again had a rough season, finishing last in their division despite Marion Gabrick and Brian Rolston setting new franchise marks for goals and points respectively. Prior to the 2006-2007 season, the Wild would make a number of signings to readjust their roster, including 29-year-old goaltender Nicholas Backstrom from the SM Liga in Finland and NHL veterans Pavel Dimitra and Keith Carney. Demetra and Rolston would lead the Wild with 64 points each, while Gaverick turned in his fourth career 30-goal season, and Fernandez and Backstrom combined for the lowest goals against in the league, earning themselves the William Jennings Trophy and leading Minnesota back into the playoffs as the seventh seed in the Western Conference. Once again, though, the Wild fell prey to the Ducks in the postseason, this time losing in five games during the first round. Minnesota would have a franchise year in the 2007-2008 season with Gavrik's 42 goals and 83 points, as well as Pierre-Marc Bouchard's 50 assists setting new club records. In addition, Gavrik would also set another new franchise record when he scored five goals in a single game against the Rangers in December. With Demetra and Rolston also putting up over 50 points each, and Backstrom ranking 8th in the league for save percentage and goals against average, the Wild edged out the Avalanche for their first ever division title. However, this also matched them against Colorado in the first round of the playoffs that year, and in a reverse scenario of the 2003 playoffs, the Avalanche upset the higher-seeded Wild in six games. Despite coming off a division-winning year, Injuries in the 2008-2009 season stifled Minnesota's offense, with only three players managing to score 20 goals, thus dropping the Wild to ninth in the conference by year's end, two points out of the playoffs. Following this disappointing season, there was nearly a complete turnover of the team's coaching and management staff, with San Jose assistant coach Todd Richards taking over as head coach, and Pittsburgh assistant GM Chuck Fletcher taking over as the new general manager. Compounding things, the club also lost Marion Gavrick to the Rangers via free agency. Afterwards, Minnesota began signing some more offensive talent in order to compensate for this loss, such as wingers Martin Havlett and Peter Sikora. Unfortunately, the Wild would go through five losing streaks of four or more games during the 2009-2010 season and finish ranked 13th in their conference. Minnesota would continue to suffer disappointment over the next two seasons, finishing no higher than 12th despite another coaching change and bringing on wingers Danny Heatley and Devin Setaguchi, as well as center Matt Cullen. After four straight years of missing the playoffs, the Wild acquired even more star power when they signed left winger Zach Parise and defenseman Ryan Suter during the 2012 offseason. Unfortunately, due to the lockout, the 2012-2013 season didn't start until January, but after things got underway, 30-point performances by Suter, Parise, and team captain Miko Koivu, as well as a seven-game winning streak in March, returned Minnesota to playoff contention. Yet again, though, the Wilds' playoff hopes would not make it out of the first round, as they were outscored by the eventual Stanley Cup champions from Chicago, 13-7 over a five-game series. Despite injuries forcing them to cycle through five different goaltenders during the 2013-2014 season, Minnesota was able to have its best year since they won their division in 2008. Jason Pominville would lead the team with 30 goals and 60 points, while Parise and Koivu racked up 50-plus point seasons of their own, allowing the Wild to finish fourth in their division for the top wildcard spot in the playoffs. In round one this year, they were matched against their division's top team, the Avalanche. After five games that included three trips into overtime, Colorado held a 3-2 advantage in the series. 
But goals by Parise and Mikhail Granlin in Game 6 gave the Wild the edge they needed to extend the series. Then in Game 7, a late third period goal by Jared Spurgeon sent the team into overtime where Nino Niederreiter scored for Minnesota five minutes and two seconds later, giving the Wild their first playoff series win since 2003. Unfortunately, Minnesota's playoff run came to a halt at the hands of the Blackhawks for a second consecutive year, when they were defeated in six games during the next round. Since winning their first playoff series in 10 years, the Wild have been a consistent presence in the playoffs, but have yet to make it any farther than the second round. However, with the acquisition of players like Eric Stahl and Devin Dubnik, as well as the development of draft picks Mikhail Granlin and Jason Zucker, Minnesota is looking to change their postseason luck.